Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the moment that many of you have been waiting for. It's our second We Play TV show match, and Navi return to defend their title. They took down EG 3 0 last time in a best of five, but we've revised the format now. We're not just going to play three matches if a team wins 3 0. We play out all five, and the reason is the format is different. You win $200 per match that you take. So if you take the Series 5 0, you get $1,000. If you take three matches, you get 600, they get 400. But then there's some bonuses if you win 4-1 you get a bonus $200 if you win 5-0 you get a bonus $500 so the maximum possible possible money either team can win is $1,500 for one best of five that's a pretty good payday I'm LD and beyond the summit I'm joined here today by Fata from Team Mouse Sports Fata my first time getting to cast with you how you doing uh hey man I'm, I'm pretty good I'm looking forward to this cast oh man Chen Pudge it's Chen Pudge time for Navi Fountain hooks? Probably. This, this could be fun. I'm excited now. It's a show match after all, so even though there's a hefty chunk of change on the table at the end of the day, uh, Navi's going to have some fun with this one, and I think we'll take a more relaxed approach with the cast uh, as far as the draft goes, and I imagine we'll see some fun things from Navi this game, but uh, Fata, having watched these two teams, I imagine, quite a bit yourself, having played against them, how do you feel they stack up? Um... What's interesting is Navi is kind of a team that likes to get an early lead and um, they're really good at achieving that. Um, and Rock's Kiss on the other hand, from what I've seen is they always lose the early game and then come back with a fat uh, Nikes or Gyrocopter. So um, maybe this game will show uh, this kind of um, happening uh, as Navi takes the early lead and Rock's Kiss comes back as they already have got the, the Gyrocopter. Yeah, if they want to take it late game, they definitely can. Sure, they've given up this anti-mage to Navi, and it gives them a decent late game option of their own, but it's a gyro and a lone druid. These two can certainly handle an anti-mage late game if they get the farm, and we'll see if they get it. When Dendi's prowling around the map on that pudge, and when there's the Chen to send him back as well as heal him up, you never know. Nowhere should be safe. That's the goal that Navi will have with this laning stage is get Dendi his early level six or seven or level seven get the hook maxed and then let the pain begin that will be their plan and if you're rocks kiss well uh how do you look to punish this how, how do you look to deal with pudge because the one thing about pudge is he's not a hero you see in competitive play and he really changes the way that you play the game it's yeah, indeed uh the the, the way to play against pudge is definitely with remaining. good wards if you have constant vision on pudge um it's extremely difficult to find openings. Um, he's gonna look to to use a lot of smokes. Uh, Dendi is, but if they if they if they position themselves right and expect the games and go into the right lane to defend the carry he's looking for, the hero he's looking for, and look for some counter ganks, then Rock's Kiss can definitely uh, get in uh, get a strong ad advantage in the in the game. Yeah, and well. It's something where you'll have to be careful. You don't want to be moving around without the vision, and they do need quite a bit of farm, this Rock's Kiss team. The other thing is, they don't actually have any real stun. So if Denny hooks you and dismembers you, there's nothing to cancel that. There's no silences. Yeah, you've got homie missile, but by the, by the time that hits, Denny's either gotten the kill or walked away. So, so far, he's going to have free reign through this game, and oh, that's right, Tuscar was just added to CM, and he's actually going to get the ban here. And I imagine it's because he's a pretty cool hero to have paired up with the pudge i guess so um uh, it's a little bit unusual but i, I I'm, I'm curious about uh, how you feel about tuscar now do you do you think this hero is worth a ban or is this just sort of having fun i have kind of mixed feelings about the hero like some of the spells are really good um well all of the spells are kind of good but the snowball kind of can also put you in a really bad position for example against the magnus and you just either uh, you just eat an ap and um but his ice shards are really strong, like, it blocks the hero off completely if you position it rightly for like 5 seconds or so, I don't know the exact info, but the ice shard spell is just so strong. The the, the, the aura, or that weird sigil that flies around, that's the attack speed slow, that is extremely hard to bring down and slows the attack speed by, what is it, 60%? And 60% attack speed slow on a Scylla bear and a gyrocopter, I guess they don't want that. Yeah, and it's and it's. I mean, not to mention it's a hero that if he gets if he gets literally snowballing, he really does snowball as a hero. If you have a good start on Tuscar, you got phase boots, your drums, you work towards usually the shadow blade is what you'll see a lot of, and 
That that walrus punch could just kill you from full HP to none, especially a hero like Keeper of the Light or even a Gyro. So, an unusual ban, but I, that's a hero I hope we see play. I mean, Drow Ranger, she may be a strong pick. She's a boring. She's a boring hero, man. I mean, even if she gets play, I don't want to see her played. But Tuscar, Tuscar is a hero I can get get behind. So we won't see him this game, but maybe later in the series he will make an appearance. It is a show match after all. So any any heroes that you're personally hoping to see, Fata? Anything that you've got your eyes on at this point? I've seen Dread play uh -huh. Axe before. It's been pretty exciting. But uh, yeah, aside from that, I can't think of anything too unusual from Rock's Kiss. Visit Solo Mid. Visage Solomon. Or That's what I've been doing in pubs. It's amazing. It's actually it's actually good. <laughs> it's 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 okay. Yeah, in pubs it's really viable. I mean, uh, when I solo queue also, it's it's really enjoyable to play Visage Solomon. We tried it in scrims a few times, and it was sometimes it worked out really well, and you just end up stomping the opponents in like 20 minutes, um, and in other games you just it just does nothing. So it's really situational, but it can work, and it's a lot of fun, and it's fun to watch. Yeah, let's see what Rock's Kiss go for next, but they picked up the Witch Doctor, and the Paralyzing Cask is actually quite good against Chen Creeps, but aside from that, kind of an unusual pick. The one thing he does give you is, as well, is the, the Healing Aura, which is pretty nice for pushing if they want to go that route, but at the end of the day, I'm just hoping for a big Witch Doctor ultimate. You know, give me, give me my YOLO MLG 420, Aegis Steals. Witch Doctor in the Roshan Pit. Carry Witch Doctor. We'll see. It's a show match. Let's have some fun. And what's this last pick going to be? That's sort of the question right now. Shadow Fiend. Wow. Talk about damage. If they get the farm, they can blow Navi up. And it's... I gotta say, it's a bold pick to go for a Shadow Fiend against Dendi Pudge. Because if you have any kind of a bad start as a hero like Shadow Fiend, Pudge will just make your life as miserable as possible. I bet Dendi has a big smile on his face right now. Just look at the heroes uh, uh, Rock's Kiss has. Just so much food for him. Like Everyone except Syllabair are so squishy and can't do anything um, if he hooks one. Like Just look at it. What can I do? The, the only thing that I have to cancel the dismember is the Witch Doctor stun and the Lucky and Tango. And the rocket, but the rocket has to fly out first. So yeah. There's really not a lot they can uh, do to answer the punch if it's played right. And Navi will go back for an Enigma. This this really reminds me of the, I almost want to say the International 1. I mean, this is the kind of draft they were picking back then. It was with a much more limited hero pool, but they have tons of pushing power. They have the Dendi Pudge to control the mid game and the, create some space and the anti mage, the dreaded hard carry to take it late. As for Rock's Kiss, well... <laughs> they've come into the modern times. They bring a Shadow Fiend, a Gyrocopter, and a Lone Druid to the table. I I'm, I feel like this is a game where Dendi's Pudge get really out of control. Like you said, there's no stuns. And the other thing is, there's nobody to really put pressure on him in the early stages. I mean, maybe Illuminate Spam or something like that. But, well, we'll just see. So, Fata, with all that being said, it's a best of five. It's a show match. And we play all five games no matter what. There's $1,000 on the line just for each game. And if you win the series 4-1, to one, you take a bonus $200 on top of whatever you've won from the individual game score. And if you win all five games, you take home an additional $500. So, on the side of Navi, that's some good money for a best of five. And on the side of Navi, we're going to have Havost taking the anti-mage solo mid. It looks like, or maybe dual lane mid. Kuroki going to be playing that Venomancer off lane. Funic. On the Enigma, they'll give Dendi the safe lane farm. He'll need it. There's some good harassing heroes on the enemy team. He'll be playing the Pudge. And last but not least, it's Puppy on the Chan. And why don't you go ahead and introduce... Well, this might be a bad time to do it. Uh, Rock's Kiss. Smoke Gankers. Yeah, this is like a ho the worst level on Smoke Gank team you'll ever see. <laughs> Indeed. In the end the of the... is so weak at level 1. Uh, like, it does 1 second stun, 75 damage. It's minimal. Yeah, and, well, they'll get a Sentry Ward up here, so looking to slow down Puppy's jungle a bit, but I imagine he'll expect this, and do they actually have any... Yeah, they do on Funic, so we'll see. Maybe he'll just try and go offensive jungle, but Dendi is going to be under a lot of pressure. He's up against an aggressive tri lane as a Pudge, so not going to be that easy start he was hoping for. I'm surprised that they have the anti major mid instead of the Pudge. Uh, it seems like they, they, were a, they expected the lanes... Um, uh, they knew they were going aggressive, uh, I mean Roxkiss is going aggressive, Navi knew that, and just wanted to, to farm anti-mage instead of Pudge. And I'm not sure if I fully agree with, it, with that decision, because if Pudge gets nothing, um, they, might have an, they might have a hard time in the mid-game. 
Because the thing is, they have no one else to control the pace of the game. They don't have... I mean, I guess they have... Yeah. Chen can gank a little bit, but... Come mid-game, if Pudge is not a threat, then... I think Roxkish just farm everywhere. And they've got more carries, and they've got... By far the stronger late-game team. Unless the anti-mage is way ahead, so... Well, Dendi, he'll have a tough time off the bat. They're actually just gonna leave two top, and then send their own dual lane mid, and... Uh, on the side of Rock's Kiss, we have Solo taking that Shadow Fiend mid. Yol gonna be playing the Witch Doctor. We'll have Vankscore. I, I think I'm probably butchering that name, playing the Keeper of the Light. BZZ is perfect on your Gyrocopter, and the man, the myth, the legend himself, one of the favorite players of the Russians, it will be Dread. So, how do you feel about these lanes? And Oh, mid lane, Gale's gonna come in now. Solo in trouble, off the bat, it's gonna be the Puppy Chen who comes in, but the cask is there to try and keep him safe. Solo, though, with that Gale, it lasts forever. It's so long, and that's a strong body block from Avos, but it's not enough. Now goes back for Yol, doesn't have a point in Mana Burn, unfortunately, he's only level one, and in the end, they just can't find the kill. That cask saved him. I'm surprised that they, I don't know, I don't know. I thought that Chen was moving to the SF, and they've got a like certain first blood, and I know what happened. I moved on to the Venomancer, seeing get low, and then I just didn't see the Chen anymore chasing the SF. Yeah, he, really cool. it was actually a paralyzing cast that I think stunned the Hellbear twice, and it just it, oh wow, it let that stun last forever on creeps. It doesn't last very long on heroes, but it lasts quite a long time on those creeps, and as a result, able to get away. So the power of Witch Doctor, I guess. Yeah. Ca Yo, already carrying this game. In my heart, he's already MVP, no matter what happens. So. Then he gets hooked 15 times and dies. <laughs> times. Yeah. Still your hero? <laughs> yeah, he's still my sweetheart, man. I love Witch I love me some Witch Doctor. Get your Shadow Blade, get your Aghanim Scepter. GG. Can't lose. Yeah, they, they can rush, obviously. Yeah, that, that's the other option. Hell, is. Ma Maledict yeah, Maledict. Max the Maledict, and that you'll have no problem killing off. I mean, even with Spell Shield and whatnot. Havos is taking a beating mid. He may even go down. He will. First blood to Solo. But he doesn't do it solo. He does it with a little help. And meanwhile, Dendi just clowning around, <laughs> just sprinting top and bottom with a haste rune, but not accomplishing a thing. And, well, it's a 1,000 gold lead for Rock's Kiss, a 750 experience lead. <sighs> this is not a good start for Navi. What what to do, Fata? What to do? Uh, hope for Dandy to dominate the mid game. I guess uh, he has got a hard lane, so they're kind of losing three lanes right now, which is really problematic since they they they're, li they're starting to lose mid after the first blood. Um, Dandy's not getting too much top, and Silla Bear obviously wins against Enigma. So uh, yeah, Rocks Kiss are off to a good start. And this is a really bad matchup for Pudge. Gyro can easily 1v1 him. If you hook him, he just rocket barrages and you pretty much die. So you don't want to hook him. You get harassed by Flat and you have crappy armor, so you can't take the harassment too well. It's a lane that BZZ is perfect and easily win, unless Puppy comes in. And here comes Puppy. But even then, they've got to be very careful about when Dendi goes, or he might end up dying. He needs to hit a hook. He hits him. The missile will come in. Dendi. Oh, Puppy not able to find the sun. And now it's y'all here to save the day. Well, more time being spent by Puppy, not... I think they could fight there. Yeah. Yeah, they could just turn. Well, I think they want a good cask, and they're not getting it yet. It will bounce through now. Catches out Dendi again. BC is perfect. Throws the missile one way. The hook comes through, and Yo pauses mid-hook. What is that? <laughs> this is some CIS Dota right now. I'll tell you. What a beautiful picture. Yeah, I'm, I'm screenshotting that one. F12. I was... I was really surprised that uh, Rock's Kiss didn't turn earlier because there were no creeps to tank up the rocket barrage except for the center and that doesn't do too much and it was stunned by the cast so he could just get a full rocket barrage uh, onto Puppy or Dandy. Puppy doesn't even have boots, Gyrocopter has boots. So he could could have really just turned onto the Chen earlier. Uh, that was really surprising that they're, maybe they expected Venomancer to be there as well, who's just moving in right now, but they have a ward there, so I'm really confused. Yeah, and they have a lane ward, so if there, even if there's a TP, they would have seen anyone coming. Yol's gonna get hooked, and he probably is going down, he is! And now BZZ is perfect, goes back to Puppy, so in the end, Dendi, it took him a while, but he finds the hook, and... In spite of that, they have three carries, and they're all farming. 22 and 5 on that lone druid, 17 and 6 on the gyro, and 16 and 7 on the Shadow Fiend, so Rock's Kiss, despite giving up that kill, I still feel they're in pretty good shape. But you can never feel too comfortable when Dendi's playing Pudge. That's when he starts hooking you. 
Yep, and like we said, the hero, hero composition just allows Danny to completely dominate uh, the mid game. Like, if he gets a hook, if he hits someone, he's pretty much dead. Like, there's not much of a like. Um, you, there's no much of a response coming out from Oxkiss lineup. There's just not many stuns. Only the cast, like I said beforehand. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll see a basher on Dread, but that's a long way off on the bear. And I mean, we're looking like 20 minutes down the road. By which point, Denny's hopefully found those kills if you're Navi. And well, this game one, it stabilized a bit. They're back to farming now. Puppy doing a bit of point is somewhat under leveled. No boots for the moment. He'll have it soon. And Denny taking a lot of harassment under the tower. They're dual laning against the tri lane from Navi, and they're being aggressive at that too. And there's not a whole lot Navi can do about it unless there's a hook. They'll try and usher them away. They can only do so much. And then we go back to the middle lane and Solo's farming here. And for Havost, a lane that Anti-Mage just can't do anything in. You walk into the creep wave, you eat a raise, and even if you have a point in spell shield, you still lose a ton of health off the bat. And, and then the bottom lane, it's just a brutal beatdown for Funic. 16 denies, most of them just creep denies from the conversions, but ushered off the lane. Dread's playing this matchup quite well, and for Na'Vi, it, it really just seems like it's going to be all about the hooks. If they're there, Na'Vi's in great shape mid-game. If they're not, I think they're pretty screwed. Yeah, I must agree with you on that one. That's, the so, other heroes just can't achieve that much, the lineup they have. So that really It just depends on how to... So what's the secret then to the, the magic hooks? Do you drink, your, eat your Wheaties? Is there some sort of mind game that comes into play? Uh, how do you hit these hooks if you're Dendi? What's the secret? Or what's your secret? <laughs> it's arrogance. He's just doing it. He's not hesitating. He's just always playing with his opponents, and he's he's just like really fast with it. He doesn't hesitate like most. Oh, can I hook him? Can I hook him? No, it, I just do it, and I just hit it. Oh I think that's boy! Name. Speaking of hooks, there it is. Y'all gets caught. Daddy goes. Dendy finds one, and that's what the doctor ordered. Tons of harassment. It is. That was a pretty aggressive dive. That was a two hero gale as well, and. Well, they find a kill, but they're not killing the carries at the same time. So now we go back to farming, and Na'Vi, uh, it's, a, it's an okay start, I want to say, just because of Dendi's hooks, but without them, I feel they'd be down by like 3k gold by now, and well, it's not only hooks, it's maybe fountain hooks that could be coming our way. We mentioned that in the draft, and now Puppy level 4, not quite at that point where we'll have Hand of God. Dendi's going to move, so they wanted to get Dendi level 7, they gave him the safe lane for that. And now he'll head mid and try to find some kills, and even Shadowfiend with farm, if he gets hooked, he will die. So, still keeping my camera firmly fixed on Dendi now. I think that also runs... Uh, Black hole, bottom lane, catches out Dread, the Eidolon's beating him down, but Solo is here. Goes inside of true form, he's dropping low, Funic will be able to get away, it looks like Solo, no, secondary race, bringing him down. And now he's gonna farm up a massive wave of Eidolon's bank score, wildly off the mark for the Eidolons with that Illuminate, but was going for the hero kill, and... Well, it's a black hole for a lone druid, but he dies in the end. But you have to say, at least Anti-Mage gets some free space now. There's only a Gyrocopter in top lane, and that's why they did the lane switch. Um, first of all, for Dendi to get uh, some kills on SF, and uh, for Anti-Mage to get free from, so this is actually not the bad... Uh, the trade on bottom lane is not ba that bad, because uh, Anti-Mage is getting free from now. Yeah, and we s we'll maybe look at Dendi getting that early smoke, something you mentioned before. He not only, he'll not only get the smokes, but he'll get them very early, and he'll even use them just for himself to gank. Unfortunately, he smoked under two Observer Wards, so, you know, they should have seen him, to say the least. And let's see where he's going to go off of that smoke. He'll head towards top. Thing is, you might see him, but if your BZZ is perfect, maybe you're just feeling confident. He, if he stays away from the tower for much longer, he's dead. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. If Dendi hits this hook, which he will. How did that not hit the creep? I don't even know. Dendi just beckoning to the creeps and cooing in their ears, and they bend to his will. Finds another kill. That was ridiculous. That's like, I mean, like, only Dendi hits that hook, because everyone else it hits the creep. <laughs> exactly. And like the gyrocopter stepped back the last second, as if he knew he would step back. Like, yeah. Just in the last second, the hook was already flying, and then he stepped back a bit, and the hook hit. And now he's gonna find two. He's found bank score. He ignores the the easy kill and goes for the double for his team, and he will find it. And Dendi, the one way that Navi could gain some control immediately, gets on the move, finds three kills, and now Navi down by only a thousand gold and leading in terms of experience and. 
Uh, there's still a Shadow Fiend who's got 4.3k net worth. There is still a Lone Druid who's got 3.3k net worth. They still have ridiculously farmed carries, in spite of Dendi's 5 and 0. Rock's Kiss are still leading, but whenever Dendi gets rolling like this, he still have to be nervous. And boy, is he rolling. Oh, bottom lane. Fonix is going to get picked off. Malphus is here, but not enough to kill BZZ. Is perfect. Safata. Denny's had a good start, but I think Navi still needs more from him. Uh, obviously, um, the carries, they've got a free carry strat, and each one of those carries has to be kept down. So Dendi has a lot of stuff to do, and I think it's and uh, I think it's not only Dendi that has to do a lot of work here, because if Gen Dendi ganks one carry, the two others will still farm. So uh, the, the Chen and the Venomans have to create some uh, free space for the others as well. And unfortunately, that's going to be hard for a level 5 Venomancer who's already got boots, picks up a smoke of his own, and... Maybe it's a game where Dendi just wants to get boots of travel, you know, so he can be, if not everywhere, then closer to everywhere. We'll see, but for the time being, he's only able to maybe pressure this top lane solo, just comfortably lurking. Baiting the Witch Doctor. Oh, this is cute. Will it work, though? Oh, there's an Observer Ward here. This could be bad. Hook is there. Solo is dead. He has a haste turn. Ain't gonna matter. Pops him like a pinata, and now on the Yol, the urn charge applied. The chase is here, but with the lone druid bear, Dendi will have to back. And meanwhile, in the middle lane, BCZ is perfect, pushing that one out. They're actually chasing. This is well, lone druid doesn't mind as much if he gets hooked. He's a, he's a tanky mother, little fellow, and we'll see. BCZ is perfect. Just continue to push and. I mean, if the Shadow Fiend can have a lot of farm, but he's still a hook away from death. The hook will fly, and y'all makes Dendi look a bit silly with that juke. And you can just see the importance of the of the ward on the, on the top lane. That's got him two or three kills already now. And that's what I meant with Patch. If you have got good counter warding and good warding yourself, you can just completely counter the hero. But if you don't have that, and they get good ward position because you don't counter it, he can just always find those easy hooks. And he's going at it again. Uh... Oh, hook! There's your net! What a beautiful setup and an easy kill! Where's my carry witch doctor? I don't think we're gonna see it at the rate this game is going. Yeah, definitely not. And a level 4 keeper of the light. They do have three farmed carries, but they also have two supports that are literally food. Dendi is just having an all-you-can-eat buffet, and now he wants a piece of dread. But this is a bit of a stringier meat, not... A tasty, easy morsel to consume. He's gonna try and rip into it, and he will get the flesh. The flesh heap stacks here. It looks like no hand of God required. He will live barely at that. Illuminate comes in, not in range. Uh, I mean, has he failed a gank yet? Seven zero and one. This doesn't seem like it. Doesn't feel like it. He's really on a roll, and I feel like he's not really trying. I don't know. It's like kind of a casual punch game for Dendi. Yeah, it seems so easy. It seems so easy. It's just casually hooking people, killing people, and then just goes back and hooks some more people. I, I feel, I just have this image of Dendi with his like feet up on the couch now, you know, sipping some cognac, occasionally clicking a hook and everyone just hitting the game, bending to his will. Oh, now smoke and head bottom. Another smoke usage from him. This one not under award. There's your Malphus, that'll set up a beautiful hook, an easy hook, and it's just a feeding frenzy. Meanwhile, they'll try and pressure this top lane. He's 7-0 and 2 at 13 minutes, and that was after having a horrible lead. I mean, against Gyro, that's probably one of the worst matchups in the game for Pudge. Literally nothing he could do, and still off to this kind of a start. Yeah, the, the thing is, Pudge only needs levels, my name, because he's meanly. He uh, gets a lot more from the night uh, creeps, so that's a bonus for Pudge players. Like, if you, if you feel you're not getting much in lane, don't push it and... Um, Go for creeps if you if you might die if you might uh, or if there might be again just stay stay back and wait for the XP um, to come and then once you're level six or seven you can just catch up with farm by killing heroes you just farm heroes like Dendi does now he really doesn't have a lot of CS he's like third lowest on the board so he's he has eight flesh heap stacks it's only level one flesh heap but he will get the full benefit of this as he levels up the flesh heap, and that's a lot of bonus strength for him. It's going to be 14 bonus strength when he maxes it out. There will be a teleport down towards the bottom lane. Funnick has black hole. Funnick has mech, but there are three here. There's your hook. Oh, barely misses. And you mentioned the wards. What do you know? A ward behind the tower. Just wards, wards everywhere. Tower does get denied, but they have to send a lot to avoid getting picked off. That's what Dendi... 
uh, utilizes a lot. He uses those three core items for his party. The swords, he buys them himself. The smoke, he sometimes buys, uh, buys him, them himself as well. And the TP. Those are like, oh, he uses them so many times. He TPs to one lane. Um, and then just smokes to the other after getting a, uh, a kill on the lane he TP'd to. That's his most important items, those three. This is, yeah, absolutely. And this is a dangerous push. There's a glyph, there's a black hole, there's a mechanism, there's a hook potentially. They're going for a send back hook, but they can't quite find it. It will only bring a creep, but that's a sad creep. I'll tell you, man. And with no with no punch here. Oh, never mind. Teleport back in from Denny. They'll have another go. The rocket comes in. Funnick's not a hero you want to dive. Dendi, right back in business. And Rock's Kiss running the hell away. I, I mean, strategically, Fata, it's like you said, this is a three-carry strategy. Something we used to see all the time back in China, back in 2010, before Smoke of Deceit was introduced to the game. And sure, you have Smoke now, but you only have one hero who can really find kills. Havos not really at a point yet where he could do it, I imagine. So, at the end of the day, Dendi's finding kills, but if Rock's Kiss play this right, I still feel like strategically they should have the edge well maybe not now if they gave up a roche and they'll go into that roche pit and it looks like no response now this is with that they have the uh the alpha wolf so it's dropping really quickly the problem right now is that now we can just keep pushing if they find a pickoff on for example kotl like that that's the main hero to defend towers right now and if he dies the tower is just gone pretty much because they've got such an advantage now they've got a mecha they've got the mana boots on chen uh, even ghost scepter on venomancer so yeah they, they they are really rich uh, rich on every hero and even though the ds is really low for them absolutely and and havost uh oh i'm kind of hearing myself in the background on your end not sure if there's anything you could do about that uh, uh, I try to check, but I'm sure. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Oh, it seems better now, so I guess you sorted out whatever the issue was. And Rock's Kiss, well, they'll group up mid. They're going to have to stick together now. They're very scared of those hooks. And they anti mage had a 16 minute battle fury for a Vost, I think even a tiny bit sooner, maybe. So, in spite of the fact that he was not having a whole lot of farm, he's finding it now. And we'll see BZZ is perfect. Group up top with his team. They want to try and push. But this is dangerous. Uh, well, for the time being, it's okay, but I feel in general this is dangerous. And now we'll see a smoke. And Dendi, with an Aegis, he can be as aggressive as he likes, and he's about to find Solo. I do. Oh, no, now with an Invis rune. Smoke is revealed. There will be a send back on Dendi. Fishing for a hook. Fishing. He's going to hook Solo. Wall Invis. I think he was aiming for Dread, and in the end, he doesn't get the timing quite right. So he doesn't get the Fountain hook. Wow, that would have been the most silly hook ever. It was pretty manly from Solo to just stand there and eat a hook. He, like, he saw Dendi approach him, he saw the sandback animation and just stood there, yeah, I'm gonna take this hook. <laughs> I'm, no I'm just gonna hope that it's not at the right exact moment to bring me back to the fountain. <laughs> oh man. He's a good teammate, I guess. <laughs> yeah, give that guy, give that guy a medal. If you're, uh, if you're Dread right now, you better, you better give him a hug and a kiss and potentially a, a thank you card, because he's earned it. And Dendi, well... Not finding hooks for the moment. He has slowed down a bit. And that's the one thing about playing Pudge is it gets to a point in the game and it feels like generally the enemy team stops giving up the easy hooks. But that's where you just have to get creative. And I imagine Dendi will have some tricks up his sleeve for that. Not really on the map. That's the one thing is they're kind of afraid to be visible right now. And they're sharing a jungle, but with this many carries, there's only so much jungle to go around. I have to mention now though, uh, SF has, has his BKB, uh, Scylla has his armlet, and Gyrocopter is working on his Yasha, so that, or he's got it now even, and that's what I mean, like the free carries are actually getting quite some items, so definitely this game is definitely not over yet, um, Navi's looking to push now, but uh, they won't get far because Keeper of the Light is there, and meanwhile Scylla Bear just continues farming, Gyro continues farming, and SF continues farming. Well I gotta say, Navi's putting on a show, Rock's Kiss, a bit of a snooze, but it's for money. Whatever works, it works, and we'll see if they can continue to pull this off. And I'm completely with you. They're not out of it by any means. In fact, I feel technically they're still heading gold. Ex experience they're behind. Havost is getting big, and he's maybe got a little more instant killing power when he gets his farm up, just because you can jump in and Manta style potentially blow up Keeper of the Light or Witch Doctor kill multiple heroes. But 
Rocks kissing more carries, and they're not losing their really crucial tier two towers just yet. In fact, they have two of their tier ones up, so sitting in pretty comfortable position at that. We'll see a Yasha for BZZ is perfect, and Denny looking for yet another hook. It's nighttime, so he won't be spotted out. Now he will be, and he'll back off. And yeah, just continuing to farm. It's one carry top, one carry mid, someone in the jungle, and everybody getting a decent slice of the pie. And a lot of this just comes down to them. They have like at least one ward up, and Navi are missing quite a few towers, so constantly having to defend their lanes. Yeah, it, like Rock's Kiss is just look, looking at a lot of split push now. Make sure that then he won't get a lot of pickoffs and siege the towers, slowly sieging the towers, getting more farm on the carries, and then just look at the late game because anti mage is pretty weak against Silla Bear. The entangle just counters him quite hard. Um, and the damage is limited because Silla Bear is such a low mana pool. Yeah, and so and so much carry, armor as well. Indeed. And the main carry is anti mage and yeah, if he's countered by Silla Bear, he's not that useful. Well, maybe Havos just ignores that Lone Druid, tries to kill everyone else, and then comes back for him. We'll see if that actually works, but... Lone Druid's probably not the hero you want to focus. And like you said, the bear, well, if he entangles you, you can't ignore him either. So it's a tough situation for him. I do imagine the next Aegis is going to go Havos' way. He's up to his power charts now. He's got his Quelling Blade. He is farming pretty quickly, and soon he most likely will overtake the Shadow Fiend, the Lone Druid. But can he overtake them by enough to outcarry all three? That's going to be tough, and... Maybe it comes down to, say, an Alpha Wolf giving him some extra damage in the fight. It's a Centaur for the attack speed. We'll wait and see about that. But they don't really have anything like Empower or Bloodlust or huge buffs going the way of the carry. Rock's Kiss, they'll back off bottom. They'll kind of chill for the moment. And this is where I really... I feel Dendi, had he, if he had Boots of Travel or some mobility item like a Force Staff, uh, even a Shadow Blade, although I don't think it's a great Pudge item, but hey, lets you sneak up on people. Maybe he could be finding more kills, but... This might be his opening with a couple heroes grouped up bottom. Let's see if he can find it. Puppy's coming in as well. Dendi. Will he see a hook? Looking. 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 There's the send back. There's the hook. He gets it. See a dredge. Straight back to the fountain. That lone druid ain't surfing out here. Dendi is waiting. He finds the kill. And he says something in Russian. Something in all chat. Now uh, Malphus on the BZZ is perfect. Test of faith is here as well. I just love the all chat. That's a show match, man. Some smack talk. A blink in from Funnick. Black Hole catches three. Big damage, but is it enough? Now Solo comes in, unwinds the Requiem of Souls, goes to work on Dendi. YOLO, Witch Doctor Alt, do it work. Dendi will go down after his godlike streak. It's out the door, and now Puppy's on the run. That was after. I think the Aegis may have just expired in the midst of that fight. I and think so, too. I think yeah, so. Yeah, that really sucks for Dendi. Now Funnick. He's in trouble. Solo nailing the raises, drills him in his submission, and Havost as well, looking for a turnaround. Triple kill for Solo, but he will pop, and he will go down. They lost all their carries. In the end, they lost all three, so I think a fight Navi's actually quite happy with, despite losing a godlike streak for Dendi. And they lost the tower, so it might have not been that well, or that good for them, since they did, in the, did end up losing the tower on the bottom lane. Yeah, they lost the tier 1 mid recently, and now they lose the tier 1 bottom as well, so... And Havost, all of a sudden, Manta Style's coming soon. Man, that Fountain Hook, that's why we have these show matches, and that's why Navi's a part of them. Always fun. Always fun. That poor Silla Bear, just flying around the map. You know, the best... yeah, the best part about it is, it's not even Dendi's Fountain Hooks this game, it's... I've cast quite a few games where other teams try to replicate it. They saw Navi do it once, and... It's like, well, we gotta try it now. I saw, I once cast a team who was losing for 30 minutes, but they hit that one fountain hook, and they were happy. And I was pretty happy, too, so. <laughs> you can lose the game, but you can have a lot of fun doing it. One of the nice things about that combo. The best thing is that it just takes out this tanky... If, if, it's, if the Scylla Bear is hit, it just takes out how much hit points? 1.8k hit points with one hook, pretty much. He's just gone. And you don't have to focus him, the, the fountain does the work, it's really awesome. And, and the bear the bear isn't a factor either, because he's not in range for it to hit. And now Havos will take some decent damage, does get stunned, but Funnick jumps in. What a manly enigma. Where's Dendi's Hulk? He gets rooted, he takes a lot of damage, he'll bite the bear. Leave me alone, he says, leave me alone. There's your Maelstrom proc, it won't leave him alone. Now the Witch Doctor all channeled from a secluded location, doing some good damage. Puppy on the run as well. Here's your call down, the hook. Not gonna be there. Oh, it does actually catch an idol on. Not what he really wanted. 
Oh man, he's barely missing what he is. Now Havos, will he be rooted? He's maledicted, he melts, he just blows up. And he will go down. Well, didn't get the fountain hook that time and Havos dies. I, I feel he just can't die this game because of what we've talked about where it's all on him and he's got three carries to deal with. So that really hurts him. He was just going into far. He wanted to kill and he just dies for it. That's typical Hervos, I'd say, because he likes to die. He likes to die a lot. He sees a kill opportunity. He goes for it. Can I? Can I just ask you, as someone who's obviously plays against him quite a bit, is that something that you take into account as a team? Like, if it's Havos versus another carry player, you'll plan a bait to kind of to draw him in too far. Is it? Is it that pronounced, or is it just like maybe he's slightly over aggressive from time to time? Uh, it's kind of interesting to me, and I'd be curious to hear if it's something you guys try to take advantage of when you play them. Nah, we really don't even see that as a factor. We just, if it happens, if he goes to a grave, we say, yeah, awesome, you died, thank you. We get an advantage now, but it's not <laughs> like we say pre-match uh, we are looking to, to to bait him into those situations or so, no. Ma maybe you should, maybe you should. Yeah, probably should, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny, because I cast... I, I was actually having a similar conversation about how aggressive Havost is and how sometimes that is his Achilles heel is overextending. And it looked like he was overextending like five or six times and he was actually just winning his team the game. Got like six or seven crucial kills. Uh, I believe it was versus Dignitas in G1 and kept their dreams of going to uh, the land finals alive. Although, sadly for them, those ended today. But yeah, it's he's an aggressive player and something you just have to learn to deal with your, if you're on Na'Vi for good. And for bad. And he'll be pushing in that top lane. He's got the Mantis down now. Has not been delivered yet. Dread is getting bigger and bigger. Maelstrom was up in the last fight. Now he goes towards the Basher. So you said they lack Disable to deal with Dendi. Once the Basher is there, well, it could be an MKB, but I do imagine it's a Basher. Uh, then there will be more to deal with it. Yeah, there's no need to get an MKB right now, in my opinion, because nobody has a butterfly. And he just looks at... Uh, like you've mentioned, uh, disabling Dandy while he's channeling the dismember and obviously um, disabling anti mage to kill him. Because getting a bash and then follow up, followed up with a root, it's a pretty dead anti mage. Look at this manly Shadow Fiend solo just strutting around like a champ on the high ground there. BKB picked up on BCZ is perfect. Your fountain hook not going to deliver this time. So Dendi. Out of the fight, and that's going to put them in kind of an awkward position. It'll teleport back, but they don't really have a tower there. Now the bear going to work. It gets scaled. It'll take some decent damage. Dread probably going to be forced back. It's Havos lurking on the sidelines. Will he? No, nope, we'll just eat the rocket there. Not doing too much damage. Only level one rocket after all. And Well, for the time being, Navi lurking on the high ground. Not going to go. I feel like Navi almost has a bat rider at their disposal, just in terms of a hero that can abuse the terrain at the Roche pit and... This is where Dendi is going to look for those hooks, but not going to find one just yet. And well, you mentioned Vision. I'm looking at Vision. Rocks can see quite a bit, especially in the rush pit. They've got every everything there. Oh no! Navi has nothing except Venomental wards, and that's actually pretty big. They've got the Venomental wards. Yeah, they are quite big. We'll see. Havos just farming the jungle. He's like, well, you guys are boring me. Like, give me some creeps. And in the end. Navi just continues to lurk around the Roche pit. If you're just tuning in, it's game one of a show match between Navi and Roxkiss. With the WePlay.tv Dota 2 League, you can watch this tournament inside of Dota TV. It's a $4 ticket. It also gives you access not just to all the show matches, but to the main event. The playoffs coming, I believe, in just a few weeks. And it's going to be a f actually in one or two weeks, I think. And basically, it's the, it's the exact same eight teams as the G1 League uh, qualifiers. So some exciting matches, a lot to look forward to. Fata, you'll be participating as well, I do believe, and well, yep. we'll see Dendi getting caught out now. This is not good for Dendi. Body blocked by the bear. Now he'll BKB. He will get sent back. Uh, he will be able to survive in the end. Sorry, that wasn't his BKB. That was BZZ's perfect. Kuroki on the run. Shadow Fiend blows up a bunch of illusions with his ultimate. Well, that wasn't really ideal. Meanwhile, Dread is just kind of killing everyone at the base. And now we'll see a Monovoid from Mavos. Can't quite kill off the Witch Doctor. Finally finishes the job. And now the bear just comes in, and if he's not getting fountain hooked, they're just not killing him right now, it seems. That was such a weird team fight. There were like three different positions of fight going on, 
Scylla Bear going against three supports, Gyro chasing a Venomancer, and the SF going against Anti-Mage, I don't know. Everybody just had their own agenda in that fight. There's there's no team in that engagement, that's for sure. I felt like I was watching ten different teams all duke it out. <laughs> maybe maybe not ten, but at least six or seven. And now they'll go back into Roshan. They can do this quite, quite quickly if they want to. No, they'll back out. They're still thinking, but they're not committing. They're scared of the hooks. Yeah, maybe scared of a Phonic Blink Dagger black hole as well. And the funny thing is they're scared when they have a decent lane ward mid. They actually have a ward that sees a decent amount as well right here near the Roshan pit. So this is with good vision, and they're still afraid. And now we'll see Navi back to the jungle, continue to farm it up. Can they farm their way out of this one? I mean, you've said no all game, and I'm very much in agreement. But I guess they don't have another choice. As the game oh, progressive, uh, progresses, uh, then he just keeps getting weaker and weaker. He needs his BKB um, to take fights now. As you can see, he's working on it. Or might even be, but I doubt that. Uh, I haven't tell, but to counter the bear, but I really doubt that. Um, and yeah, it's like he's he's got many kills. He's got a lot of strength, but other than that, he's got 50 CS, minimal items. And he, like, I, I can say that he fully depends on the Chen hooks now to, to fully dominate the team fight. If they manage to get a Fountain Hook on Scylla Bear, SF, or Gyrocopter, then that's big and they might be able to win the fight. But otherwise, if he just gets a normal hook on, for example, Scylla Bear, and then he just summons the bear to him and he gets bashed, then I don't think they have a chance at winning the fight. Yeah, and if you pull the Gyro in, he just pops his BKB, he barely takes any damage, maybe he drops a cooldown before you can kill him, and that's bad news. And the thing is, even if they do kill one, there's still two very scary carries left to deal with. And they're, they're going to get scarier and scarier as this game goes along. A lot of room yet for the Lone Druid, the Gyrocopter, and the Shadow Fiend for Rock's Kiss to continue to grow and extend. And they're farming, and they're farming hard. We see BZZ is perfect, abusing that flat cannon to take out two camps at once, just getting every little bit of gold and experience he can out of that jungle. Navi will sit mid and they'll fish, have a little fish at the Roche pit, but nothing doing there for Dendi. I gotta say, if I'm a Navi fan, I'm not really too happy with how this game is progressing. It was a great explosive start for Dendi. But like you said, he needs a lot more, and it's not just a BKB. He needs a lot of armor, too, because otherwise he just melts to... I mean, you look at things like uh, Presence of the Dark Lord... At already having four base armor, suddenly he's in the negative, the bear's hitting hard, the bear's a basher, and soon, probably, he'll go towards an Assault Caress. If he wants to, that's an option. He dies very quickly, and can't kill quickly either. I think Navi should have went into the uh, enemy jungle a bit earlier, because Scylla Bear, Gyrocopter, and SF were farming it like, with, as three people together, just kept farming their jungle. If Navi would have reacted to that and just went there with a smoking, for example, earlier, then uh, maybe the free carries wouldn't have been as fat as they are now. But that's easy to say. Yeah, it's and hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you only have one hero that can really make a kill happen. Like a, a Venomancer can maybe make a kill happen at the five minute mark. Not when there's a BKB on a Shadow Fiend and a Gyro. You gale them, even if, they, even if the gale hits before they're BKB'd and they're still slowed after. Doesn't really matter. I mean, they're still not going to die without a lot of follow-up. It's just really, I mean, basically Dendi who could have found those kills, and uh, they also didn't group up as a team. And uh, they did farm the jungle at one point, but they didn't really park themselves there. They kind of moved out and just sort of roamed around. Dendi will actually go for a gem given to him. No, he bought it himself. Bought his own wards. Bought his own smokes. Now buys his own gem. And he'll look for a hook top. Can he find it? Oh, he's gonna get scouted out. Vanksgor does it. Dendi, will he have a fish? He will. He hits it. He goes for the dismember, but that's not the most important here to kill. They still get him nonetheless. Now into BZZ is perfect, but he's got BKB. He might need to pop it soon. Meanwhile, the bigger fight, and it does appear. Lone Druid killing off Puppy. So nice kill there. Oh, Solo. He gets hooked, but he's got a BKB. So he'll man up. It'll now look for Requiem. Will there be a Monovoid to cancel that one? Not even needed. Black hole. Nice black hole, but it doesn't seem like enough necessarily. Havos with the Monovoid jams it in. Dread's still alive. Funnick on the run. That's four dead. It was enough. It was a beautiful black hole. An even better follow-up. And in the end, Navi, they find a way. Four, for, uh, four alive, five dead for Rock's Kiss.
They really yeah, shouldn't be winning those fights, but they are. The battle was just amazing. It's got four heroes, the three core heroes in it as well. And the Battle Fury anti mage just said, yeah, awesome. I'm gonna get some kills now. And he's up to 7k gold now, so we might have just seen the turn of the game right here. Uh, Havos, you, you know there's a Divine Rapier with your name all over it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great way Russian to... Is that's a great... Russian is there, they're pinging on it, so it <laughs> might even be possible. Well, and that's a great way to deal with that bear. It will not live for long against that, and... I mean, of course, you get a butterfly. It probably does. I think it probably does more damage uh, with all the illusions getting the benefit of it. Yeah, it's a lot better, but. Um... Not as fun. Yeah, look. We, Come on, Havos. Come we on. See it. No! Oh, Boo! Boo! At least we can see Will Blade now. Alright, yeah. Well, we'll see what he goes for. He bought it up. Alright, shame on you, Havos. Everyone, I'd like you to log into Dota 2 and report Havos. You can't actually do that anymore, so I'm allowed to say it. But we'll see a free rush going the way of us. Careful, people always find a way. <laughs> if they find a way, then hey, I'm helping Valve fix the game, alright? So it's all part of my plan. Dendi, oh, he wanted a fountain hook. Nice tactical pause attempted by y'all. I think that's a troll pause. <laughs> Is this a uh, haha, you didn't get your hook off pause? I guess so. Yeah, I think so too. No reason given in all chat either. I love it. This is much better than a mannered game. For, like, for a show match, this is really what you want. Constant pauses after a missed fountain hooks? Sounds legit. Yeah, seems, seems, <laughs> just still no reason given whatsoever. Well, I just, I just want to go take a piss, man. I'll be back, apparently. <laughs> so Navi, after that clowny fight top, an amazing black hole by Fodic, they now lead this game one of this best of five show match by 4,000 gold, 12,000 experience. For anyone who's just tuning in, who sees Dendi on Pudge and says, hell yes, but I'm wondering what's going on. It's the WePlay.tv Dota 2 League, and it's a show match, our second show match of the event. I believe we'll have maybe one more show match before it's all said and done. This one is going to be five games. So no matter what, we play all five games. For each match you win, that team gets $200. For a total of potentially $1,000. If you win four games, you get an extra $200. If you win all five, you get an extra $500. So if you win all five, you actually end up making $1,500 in the end, but still decent money to be claimed regardless. Funnick will get kind of caught out here. The Courier is low, but Dread unable to finish it off. He will be Gale and Poison staying down, and now Kuroki mans up, but gets bashed. And now the Ghost Scepter. Here comes the Requiem. Oh, he's going to melt. Is he ever going to melt? Not actually enough. He's sent back. He will live, and it's a Vosh. Just slicing and dicing on the back lines and now going to work. Actually, not the best Blake ever. Chasing y'all. Dendi found a hook. Kills off Dread. A crucial kill. There's your slam. There's your jam. In the face of all these carries. They're just melting. And Havost, he's snowballing hard. Now a 5,000 gold lead. And I don't know if Rock's Kiss can take this the way the game's going. They do have an Eagle Horn on BZZ, but it's just too many deaths on their carries. Five deaths on the Lone Druid. Four on the gyrocopter and five on the shadow fiend it's a feeding frenzy for navi and they're getting the map control and havost he's not dying seven two and four look what we've uh, forgot to mention just look at the venomancer zero deaths in a 36 minute kill fest yeah and he's got an agonim to go step than yasha so he might be looking at out carrying one of the opponent's carries he's a support hero but he's an agility hero which makes him a carry right well not quite yeah, that's, but it helps that's, pop logic. that's, pop logic. <laughs> that's actually very, it's something you'll hear a lot in pubs so most is manning up he mances out of the blindy light he gets an easy kill and now it's yo in trouble they're getting farmed under the shadow of their tier four towers they will lose another and now it's going to be rax open looks like navi gonna take one lane of rax uh, i don't even think they back here i think they go for a hook they try and fight they have black hole they have bkb there's actually literally nothing aside from a bear bash to cancel, which is almost impossible to pull off. Havos will blink in. He's going to pop his Aegis here, I believe. Maybe not. He's still chasing. He'll jump in, and there's your black hole. Catches everybody else and their mothers, and they're all dying. One by one, Havos going to finish the job. It looks like just a disconnect. No GGs from our Witch Doctor, who didn't have his highlight reel game that I was hoping for. No Shadow Blade for you. No Agonyms for you. And game one, that's 200 bucks in the pockets of Navi. Look who's coming that escalated you. quite quickly <laughs> that game. Right? Yeah. After one black hole, it just took a complete turn and Navi was, uh, had a full advantage again for some reason. Yeah, that one black hole, that one fight top, and then game was good. And then Funny hit one more just to rub it in. And no. Navi, off to a 1 0 start. And I gotta say, I felt like they were really screwed strategically. They shouldn't have won this game, but they just played way too good. 
And they'll take game one, guys. But it is, of course, a best of five. We'll be coming back soon with game two. $200 in the pockets of Na'Vi. But every match is another 200 So for Rock's Kiss, they will fight on. Let's see what kind of crazy picks are in store for us in game two. How can you top a Fountain Hooking Pudge? We only got one Fountain Hook, but it was a beauty. Well, we'll see. I'm LD and Beyond the Summer. I was joined here today by Fata. If you enjoy his casting, he is a fantastic player for Mass Sports. Handles that solo mid role. You can follow him on Twitter. Twitter.com slash Dota2Fata. And I have to say, Fata, you have a criminally low number of Twitter followers. So I'll try to help you rectify that today. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got your back. And you have mine with this cast. So thanks for joining me, Fata. You'll stick around at least for another game or two, right? Uh, I'm not sure. We might be looking at some scrims in there. Oh, all right. Well, if you don't stick around, thanks for joining me. In case you do leave, any shout-outs or closing words? Um, I'm not really. I can't think of anything right now. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't give Tendi Pudge. All right, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. All right, guys, he's Fata. Once again, twitter.com slash Dota2Fata if you want to follow and support him and his team, Mouse Sports, as well. We'll be seeing more of them at WePlay.tv's main event. But for now, game one's in the books. $200 for Navi. Game two coming up right after this.